What's going on everybody? Blake with the Linux Fraud here, and today I wanted to talk about Linus. Linus is a security audit tool for Linux and other Unix, Unix-like systems. While it is primarily used by security specialists, pen testers, and system administrators in server environments, it can actually be extremely helpful for us plebs to use on Linux desktop. It will tell you a bunch of information about your system and will also give you tips on how to harden your system. It will determine information like the specific operating system type, kernel parameters, installed packages and services, and uh, the number of binaries that you have on your system, and a whole bunch more. Now just a quick history of uh, the Linus audit tool. Michael Bolin, uh, is the original author of Linus, as well as the author of uh, RK Hunter, which is a uh, it's another helpful tool that scours your system for any potential rootkits. If that sounds like an interesting video, let me know down in the comments if you want to see that. The current developers of Linus is a company called Sysify, an independent software company that also has their hands in the field of information security. Actually, a uh, fun fact, Linus won an InfoWorld Bossy Award in 2016. The BOSSI stands for Best Open Source Software Awards. I'll link the uh, InfoWorld's website down below uh, if you want to check all of that out. So let's jump to the first VM. I've got a few VMs set up. I've got an Arch VM, uh, an Ubuntu, and a Fedora. So before you can do this, of course, what you're going to want to do is install Linus. It's in every repo, I'm pretty sure, at least apt. Pac-Man, DNF, I would assume Zipper. Just search for it. It's L-Y-N-I-S. You're going to want to install that first, and then all you have to do is open up a terminal. Now, you do have to run it as sudo. So, sudo linus audit system password in, and it's going to run this test. All right, now, when it's done, all you have to do is scroll up a little bit, and you can see right here the hardening index. Just a base Arch install is 65, and you can see that it performed 231 tests. It also checks to see if you have a firewall enabled and a malware scanner. Now, the interesting thing about this is if we go up to the top, but if we just take a look at this, the initial test that it does is it detects the OS, checks profiles, gives you the program version. So this is the program version of Linus. The, uh, the, the most up-to-date package is 3.0.8. Tells you the operating system, system name, what kind of, uh, you know, if it's rolling release, if it's LTS, your kernel version. Right here, it's going to tell you where all the logs are. Now, I'm not going to go into the logs, but if you do perform one of these tests, you can go into the logs and you can get a, a much more detailed uh, what log of everything that, that, that it did a test on. And it lays it out very nicely. As you can see, here's the different categories, boot and services, checks for password protection, checks the permissions on files. Now you're gonna see a lot of these where it says either like exposed or unsafe. Those are things that once you get to the bottom where it gives you the tips and suggestions, you can change things within your system to harden your system even more. I would assume that if you have never ever heard of this package before, you've probably not done Unless you already know about it, you've probably not done a lot of these suggestions that Linus gives you. You can see it checks the kernel, memory and processes, users, groups, and authentication. So it goes through a lot. It tells you how many shells that are on the system. Now you get down here to Linus 3.0.8 results. I have one warning. IP tables modules not loaded. So, well, it's loaded, but no rules are active. If you go ahead and if you did, if you installed something like UFW, enabled that and set that, that warning would go away. Now these suggestions, obviously the warnings, you're going to want to take care of whatever warnings are shown on your system. But then the suggestions, obviously they're just suggestions. You don't have to do any of them, but if you do, it definitely does harden your system more. So for example, like personally on my host machine, I don't do every single suggestion that it does because remember, so Linus is is primarily used on like in server environments, but this is a desktop. So there's some things that personally I don't think are necessary to do on your desktop. It's, you know, if you're not in a server environment, but there are some things and we're going to go through them right now. So one of the first steps that I always do right here, you can see it says, if not required, consider explicit disabling of core dump in Etsy security limits.conf. So we're going to split these windows, throw this console over here. We're going to open up another terminal. Now we're going to go to, so we can go sudo nvim etsy security limits.conf. Now what I do is I go in here, 
you put a asterisk tab over to this next uh, to this next column. Type in hard. Tap over to the next column, core, and zero. You're gonna do that again, asterisk. Now you're gonna, instead of hard core, you're gonna do soft core, zero. Now what a core dump is, is the memory of an executable program. It's usually used to, to see why a program crashed, but in some instances, you you know, a bad actor or even yourself could use it to kind of see some confidential information about said program. If you do this, this will disable core dumps. And personally, I don't think on a like a personal machine, a desktop environment, I don't I don't think you need these personally. I don't. Now we're gonna we're gonna harden some of these, not all of them, but then uh, I'll just show you a couple of them that I do personally, and then we'll run the test again and see how much um, we're gonna try to get it up to 70 at least. It's at 65 right now. We can check PAM configuration, add rounds if applicable, and expire passwords to encrypt with new values. Now a lot of these, so this next one says configure password hashing rounds in Etsy login.defs. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go to this terminal again. Now we're going to do sudo nvim etsy login dot defs. Now here this is going to have things like how long is the delay if there's a failed login. This is for say if someone tried to that didn't know your password and tried to log in. If it's a failed password attempt it's going to so right now it's set to three seconds. It's going to take three seconds until that user or that person is allowed to try the password again. I like to set it to something, say, 6,000. So 6,000 seconds is 100 minutes, which is an hour and 40 minutes. That would mean that it would take an hour and 40 minutes until you could try that password again. Now, it is kind of annoying if you set it to something like this. Usually I do, like, actually, like 600, like 600 seconds, because then that's still kind of annoying. If I personally get my password wrong and I have to wait that long, I'm just rebooting my system, because that is a thing. If you reboot the system, it'll bypass that and you can try automatically. One thing I do like to change in here is if you go down to the password max days, it's set to 99,999 days. That's how long until your password expires. Now, personally, I mean, this is all up to you. You could change it to, say, every 90 days, 180 days, 365 days. We're just going to set this one to 90. And then the password minimum days will set to 85. So the, min, the minimum days means that you cannot change that password for 85 days. At 90 days, you have to change the password right so you can't change it until 85 days and then you can change it between the 86th and 90th day but on the 90th day your system will make you change your password the warn age is of a course it's just going to warn you a week before that 90 day mark and there's some other stuff in here that if you wanted to look at and change you absolutely could uh, login retries i like to set that to one and login timeout usually set this to about the same as the um the first one up there about 600 seconds now down here you can see that the encryption method is set sha 512 which is a by default and it's it's actually a that's very common now fedora i believe has changed their encryption method to yes crypt which is something that you are able to change here if you wanted to but just make sure that if you wanted this to be encrypted it regardless there's there's sha there's bcrypt there's yes crypt there's those three you can change any of those if i wanted to change this to yes crypt but for this to for this to be enabled i have to go down here and uncomment yes crypt cost factor exit that out and this can go from a range of 1 to 11 usually i would go to the to the max it does use more cpu the higher the higher that value is set it does use more CPU, but if you have a decent amount, then I don't think it really makes a difference. So you could set that to 11. Or if you just wanted to stay with the default SHA, you could go up here again, SHA 512. But then of course, just remember to uncomment this and uncomment this. So the minimum and maximum rounds, I would say if you wanted to do max rounds or minimum rounds, you could have like 
so the default's 5,000. Fuck it, go up to like 5 million, right? Max would be maybe say 50 million. You can literally go up to, what is this? One, two, three, one, two, three. You can go up to 999 million, 999,999. I've never done that, but I mean, you can set it to whatever you want. So that's Etsy login.defs. We'll go back over here. Let's see. So we disabled core dumps. We add, we added hashing rounds. We can install a PAM module. PAM stands for Pluggable Authentication Modules. You can install something like PAM Cracklib or PAM Password. I think that's quality control, I would assume. If you use Cracklib, um, you could install both of them if you wanted. So say we'll do that. sudo pacman dash s Cracklib, I believe it is, on Arch. Another, uh, this is not, or it kind of does have to do with security and whatnot, but another good package is pwgen, which is password generation. You can install that, pwgen. And what pwgen does is it prints out a whole bunch of different passwords, but now that's just by default. We could go pwgen 1 and 20. So that's going to that's going to print out only one password but 20 characters long and you can actually go do dash dash help and it shows you the different kinds that you can do. You can add capitalization, no capitalization, numerals. So let's say let's do that, right? So we do pwgen 120-c for capitalization dash n for numerals. Now you can see 20 characters long. Now it's got lowercase capital letters and it's also got numbers. So it just makes it a little bit stronger. That's personally how I create all of my passwords. I think it's a pretty handy little tool. Now we go back over here. So we set expire dates and everything for all of that. So that doesn't matter. We set a minimum and maximum password age. Then also we can go into Etsy profile. Go over here, sudo nvim Etsy profile. Now right here, default, the U-mask is set to 2022. I personally like to set that to 077. Oops. That just makes it 077 is a little, is, is actually not a little. It's a lot stronger than 022. We'll right quit that. A few other things that you can do is you can disable drivers like USB storage. So when you're not using it, if if you if you disabled that and you tried to stick a USB, like a drive or any USB device in, your computer will not recognize that. Because for instance, you could if you left your laptop on, even if it was locked, if the security, if it wasn't hardened, somebody could theoretically come in with a USB drive and get into your system. I'm not going to set that up right now, but that is something that you can do. It recommends to install Arch Audit. Arch Audit is actually um, quite helpful. We can go sudo pacman. Obviously, this is only on Arch-based distributions. Arch Audit. Now, if we run that, it will actually print out a list of applications and programs that are at risk, right? So Grub is actually affected by a very high risk vulnerability right now. And you can see right here on the right, it says high risk, medium risk, or low risk. I do suggest going and checking what those vulnerabilities are all about. I'll link that down below. So that's just a way to get a sense of what applications on your system are potentially at risk for vulnerabilities. And then there's obviously a whole bunch of other things. So again, I'm not going to go through all of those, but you can just see the amount of information that this program gives you. And you can sit and you can go through all of these and really tweak your system and harden it so that it's more secure. This is a simple little tool. You run one command and it gives you all of the, it, it runs all those tests on your system. And if you didn't know anything about this, I think this is very very helpful. So another thing I want to uh, tell you about is for all of these suggestions, they have links right under them. If I click on that link, I can open the link, Firefox will open, and it will actually give me a description of what the suggestion is and how to solve it. So if you don't know exactly what to do, this will, it's not going to give you like super detailed instructions, but it at least gives you a good start to then you can go and 
find more information if need be. So one last thing, let's close this uh, console out. We're gonna log out and then we're gonna log back in, run Linus again just to see how much, just from doing those few tweaks, or how much the index, the hardening index went up. Pseudo Linus audit system. So now just you can see now the hardening index is at 70. And technically 70 is quote unquote passing. You can do more of course to uh, get that score higher. But you can see just from doing those few little tweaks it does bump it up. Now let's jump over to Fedora's VM, run Linus through there. We're not going to go through like the in-depth like we did here. I just wanted to show you on one system, you know, the few tweaks that you could do easily. I just want to see what the score is on Fedora and compare them with, of course, this Arch Linux and then Ubuntu. All right, so now we're in Fedora. We're going to run sudo linus audit system. All right, so now it's done. Let's go up here. Okay, yeah, so 73. So Fedora is definitely, it's almost 10 points more hardened than a base Arch install, right? Which makes sense. Arch is very bare. Fedora has a bunch more stuff and it has SE Linux installed too. Old Ubuntu. I've actually never used Ubuntu. All right, so open up a terminal. We're just going to run a good old sudo Linus audit system. Put in your password. I actually was not, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. Again, you can go up here, probably the same amount of suggestions and whatnot. Let's see if there's any warnings. IP tables, so same warning. Pretty much the same uh, suggestions, just like Fedora, just like Arch. You can go through there and harden your system. All right, everybody, well, that was the video. So what we had, Arch was 65, Fedora was a uh, 72 or 73, I think it was 72. And then Ubuntu came in last, actually, uh, at, with a 64. So it went Fedora, Arch, Ubuntu. I was not expecting Ubuntu. I know that it's not like some crazy secure distribution, but I wasn't expecting Ubuntu to be less than Arch. Just because Arch is so bare, you know, and you have to configure everything. But yeah, so that was it. That was the results of the test. I hope you learned something. And act honestly, if you've never heard of Linus, go install it right now. Run that on your system. Go make those few tweaks, even if it's just the ones that I showed you, uh, just to make you know make it a little more secure. But that is the video, everybody. If you liked it, please consider hitting that like button. And if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing because we have a bunch more content coming your way.